This is a video I made several years ago regarding this former pastor by the name of Kevin Wesley. That video he made is now starting to recirculate on the internet. I've heard about maybe three people so far speak on that as if this was something new. It's nothing new. This is a video that Kevin Wesley had made a long time ago. And the title of that video was, Ex-Pastor Leaves the Church, Says the Bible Isn't Real. Now, of course, people that have not seen this video, people that are weak in their faith, or people that have no faith nor knowledge, will listen to what he say and think that this is the truth. The Bible says you will know them by the fruit they bear. If you look at the lifestyle that this man now lives, he lives a polygamous lifestyle. If that's what he chooses to do, that's on him. But if you look at the lifestyle he lives now and him being a cult leader, you have so many people that desire to live a certain life, to do certain things, but yet when you are bound by the Bible or you're bound by your faith or religious belief system, you have to find reasons on why you reject that. You find all types of excuses on why you don't go to church or why you don't believe in God or why don't you believe in the Bible. But then if you watch their lives, their lives end up being complete opposite to what the Bible teaches. It's used as an excuse to do what you want to do. But I'm going to let you listen to a portion of that video that he made. But before I do that, I want to read a scripture to you. And this scripture is taken from 1 John 2 and 19. And it reads as follows. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. I'm going to read that verse again. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. In other words, he was never of Christ from the very beginning. And the Bible speaks on the wolves in sheep clothing. The Bible speaks on the false prophets and the false teachers. And this is his way of manifesting himself. Now, you have some preachers that end up leaving the faith, finding excuses to leave the, the faith. And they usually use the church or uh, the Bible or their faith or belief system to try to justify that. But for some, in my own humble opinion, I think this is their way of trying to escape the judgment because the Bible also says, woe to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my flock. So they think that if they decide to give it up, that they will be escaping the judgment of God. God forbid. Now, I question pastors like this and I really don't take what they say serious. I don't take them serious. Because if now you all of a sudden finds out that the Bible is not real and the characters are not real. You were the one that said that God called you. You was the one that said that God spoke to you. No one in the church told you to do that. You could have just been a regular churchgoer or a member. But you were the one that said that God called you. So if God called you 
and you're now saying that it's not real. Who was speaking to you in the first place? Who was speaking you to you from the very beginning? Was it Satan? Who spoke to you when you said God called you and told you to preach? When you stood up before the congregation and you told the people that God put in my heart that you give a hundred dollars. And now you're saying that it's not real. Who was speaking to you? Were you a deceiver? Were you purposely deceiving the people? So that's the question I have for people like Kevin Wesley. Now, there are belief systems out there that can throw you off your path. If you take time out to listen and without studying, because most Christians do not study their Bible. They don't know the Bible. The Bible says that you err for not knowing the scriptures, nor the power thereof. And whatever Kevin Wesley felt that he found out, maybe that could have been your test to see how faithful you were. Because the Most High have a way of testing your faith. Testing your loyalty. And then for you to leave the church. For you to leave the church and say the Bible's not real. And then you become a cult leader. You become a polygamist. What does that really say for you? Now I'm going to play a portion of this clip. And I want you to hear what he has to say. Hey everybody. Uh, I put up a post yesterday on Facebook uh, that said, what if the Bible is not the word of God? Needless to say, people were um, appalled by it, uh, disgusted even. I'm quoting them, okay? They say they've seen me preach. They have seen me cry. They have seen me minister. They have seen me with my hands raised, loving Jesus. And that's true. I was a preacher. I was a minister. I was a dancer. All these things. I was a gospel rapper. But if I can do all these things and you witness my sincerity while I, while I was doing these things, don't you think I must have came across something sincere, something that's so valid that it shook my belief, even when I didn't want it to? So you say you're going to pray for me. You don't think I prayed? You don't think I begged this Jesus I grew up believing in to just show me the validity? You don't think I researched and tried to prove that this Bible was no doubt the inspired word of God. I tried. And it's just not true. Okay? So, it comes a time in every man's life when he has to make a choice. I understand that there's a lot of people who saw me be Christian, who saw me love Jesus, pray to Jesus, worship Jesus. I understand that. But to all of you people that I love dearly, I have to tell you, I am making a choice to stand on what I now know to be truth. And if you don't want to be my friend anymore, then you were never my friend to begin with. If you don't want to be my brother, my sister anymore, then you were never that. I have done nothing but been good to you guys, love you guys, and I'm still doing the same. I have not changed. My beliefs have. So if, you, if you're ready to cut me off and throw me out because of my beliefs, which you can't see anyway, and we were never friends. Think about what he just said. He's telling the people that if you're willing to cut him off because of his belief system, you were never with him. But now the Bible says that if you turn away, then you were never with them. This is fair use. I spend my life worrying about it. I've been asking people and begging people like, look, don't give up on me. Love me. I love you. You know, I'm not going to do that anymore. If you guys don't want to rock with me anymore, then that's fine. I love you. I'll miss you. And all I can do is hope that one day you see where I'm coming from. But I will not stop posting. I will not stop teaching what I now believe. Just as no one can make me stop teaching what I believed in when I believed in the Bible. Okay? I now know that without a shadow of a doubt, the Bible was manufactured for control. I understand this. You don't. And that's okay. So you have a right to be upset. Because you've never been told these things. I am a teacher. 
My job is to teach you things you don't already know. Now, what you have to understand is this. If I say something that is outside of your realm of knowledge, okay, look it up. Don't just get mad at me and tell me I'm wrong and tell me, well, I have personal experiences because you don't even know where I'm coming from. Well, I've done all the research you've done. No, you haven't. You may think you have, but until you sit down and have a real conversation with me, you will never know where I'm coming from. So when I tell you I believe in God, I do. But when I tell you I don't believe in the Bible or any character in the Bible, any, all of them are fake. All of them are manufactured. None of them ever existed. Now, he just got done saying that he believed in God. Which God do you believe in? Because then right after you said you believe in God, you said all the characters in the Bible are fake and not real. Does that mean that God of the Bible is fake and not real? I'm going to repeat that. Does that mean that the God of the Bible is fake and not real? But yet you say you believe in God. So what God do you believe in? See, this is where people are deceived. Because you hear words, but you don't know in what context they're using that word. He said he believes in God. But then he turns to say all the characters of the Bible are fake and not real. Does that mean that the God of the Bible, which happens to be a character of the Bible, are you saying that that God is fake and not real? Now, understand where I'm coming from. Because I'm trying to make this video short. On one platform, you have literature, spiritual literature. This is where you get Jacob, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Jesus, Judah, okay, Daniel, Ruth, all these names. Literature. On a historical platform, where you're looking to see if things actually existed, if the world truly was ended by water, these things never happened. So what we're reading in this book are not things that correspond with his story, okay? Historical evidence does not back the Bible. If what you believe in is not backed by historical evidence, you have been deceived. What I'm looking at is real things. Oh, Kevin, your program. No, I no longer believe in talking snakes, dragons, unicorns. Yes, unicorns and the Bible. I no longer believe in any of that stuff, okay? I believe in what I see, and what I see and what I have looked at myself and put my hands on is relics that predate Adam's existence by, by thousands of years. I've seen them myself. So you can say, well, I believe that God fashioned man from clay, and that's fine. I believe that God fashioned man from clay, just like the Bible said 7,000 years ago. Okay. Well, who built the Sphinx? Because this has been here since way before Christianity, way before Adam ever existed. Now, where did he get this information from? Did he get it from some place different than we've gotten our information? Because I've studied many books. And I'm sure that he probably went to another country and looked at some quote unquote historical monuments and came back and says, OK, now I believe what they tell me is true. That's like the so-called history of the so-called black people that were told that they were taken into captivity from Africa. But yet you can't find any type of link to your own personal ancestry that will link you to Africa. So now you have so-called black people bouncing around what we're Moors, you know, we're Asiatic, you know, we're Native American, we're Africans, we're this, we're that. They're running around like a chicken with their head cut off because they don't know. The only information that they have to go according to is the information that's presented to you. Unless you've actually lived back in that time period and can personally attest that the Bible is not real, you don't know for sure. Just like the Quran or the Beta or other religious books that people believe in. But yet now you have the truth. You've only been here less than 60 years. 
But yet now you know something that many that have lived a long time, much longer than you, you now know more than they know. You've now come into truth to boldly stand up and say that the characters of the Bible is not real. It's all fake. You listen to people like Bobby Hemet and other so-called black conscious people out there that claim to have knowledge and information, and you run with that because you error for not knowing the scriptures nor the power thereof. This is fair use. So I thought that in the beginning the world was dark and then null and void, and God looked at the face of the earth and, and then formed all these things and then said they were good. But then later on in the Bible, he regretted making man. But we say God don't make mistakes. Listen. There's no way you're going to convince me that this God that you believe in, who inspired, so-called inspired the word of God, is okay with slavery. There's no way, when your Bible teaches you that slavery is okay, that what our ancestors went through is okay with God, then I have a problem with that. So when you look back and you see where this book came from, it all started 325 A.D. The Council of Nicaea wrote this whole book, put all these characters in it, used some uh, Egyptian type uh, theologies, not theologies, but Egyptian type um, astrology, I should call it, um, to, to form the, the character of a lot of the people that's in this Bible. Question for you. What made up the Council of Nicaea? Could you name the, mem the members of the Council of Nicaea? Who were the members? I'm just curious because I've heard so many anti-Christ, anti-biblical, anti-church, so-called black conscious people use the Council of Nicaea as a crutch and an excuse to say they wrote the Bible, it's not real. Who made up the Council of Nicaea? What were their names? Yeah, they were plagiarized, but um, they were never intended to be gods, okay? Africans didn't truly believe that somebody died and rose again. They did not believe that. So it's just funny to me how, you know, we're taught all our lives that Egypt had slaves, and then we find out historically they didn't. Listen, we're being lied to. At some point, we have to use common sense that the same people who stole us from our land raped our ancestors, hung us, why would they give us a book that would benefit us, set us free? Why would they do that? They would not. Okay, so you say I'm not religious. Well, why do you practice Christianity? Because Jesus was a Jew. Christianity was not created until 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea, which was several years after Jesus had supposedly lived and died anyway. Jesus How do you know that for a fact? outside of what you read and what you've studied and what someone else gave you that they might have gotten it from someone else that could have gotten it from someone else that could have got someone that say they went there. Where did you get that information from? Don't say that you studied. Oh, I've studied it. I've researched and I found this. And then you start regurgitating what you've read in a book or what you've heard somebody else say. The same thing that people do with the Bible or the Quran or the Hadith or any religious book that's left here for people to believe in. What makes your information different and more valid than the average Christian that believes in the Bible? Wouldn't even know what Christianity is. He didn't practice it. It didn't exist when he did. So why do you celebrate Christianity? Since I'm so crazy. Please research. And if you don't want to talk to me, if you don't want to be around me, that's fine. But until you do your research, maybe that's best. I love all of y'all. But like I said, at some point, a man's got to take a stand. Peace. What type of research did you do? What type of real research did you do outside of reading and regurgitating what someone else had said? That's information I read a long time ago, back in the 80s, I've known that. I've debated with Moors, Moors, Hebrew Israelites, five percenters, Nation of Islam, Nation of Gods and Earth, 
I've debated with them. And you know what? Like I admitted in one of my prior videos, they almost had me like that too because I was early in my walk with Christ and they started throwing information that I've never heard before. And it really shook me for a moment. And I had to actually lay back off of my study for a while because it was confusing me. See, the Most High is not the author of confusion. It was confusing me. And then I went back and I studied and started researching. But then common sense, because you mentioned common sense. Common sense popped up in my head. And I started thinking, okay, if I give this up, what do they have to replace it that's different than what I have now. And when I looked at their organization and how unstable it was and how they were worse than the church, how they were looking out for themselves, they were looking for power and control themselves. And that's why you find the majority of them are always attacking the church, the black church. They're always telling you to come out of the churches. But then you have so-called black conscious people on YouTube that came along with so-called information telling you to get out the church. And now they turn around and gave you the behind the kiss after they made millions of dollars off of you. And now you're mad. Now you're disappointed. See, so. So many people are being scammed and manipulated. By people like. Kevin Wesley and the ones that manipulated him. If you listen to Bobby Hemet, for example, Bobby Hemet, someone recently questioned about Bobby Hemet and where he was because he hadn't been on the scene. And I heard that Bobby Hemet was sick. So if Bobby Hemet passes away, he now has to give an account for the things that he taught and the people he turned away from the Most High with his damnable teachings. So you got former preachers now that uses former preachers claim that the Bible is not real and you got people that will listen to them because they're former preachers and they think if anybody's going to turn a preacher, then what he has to say must be valid. It must be real. But like the scripture read, they were never with them. Because if they were with Christ from the very beginning, sincerely, then they would have remained with him. Those that live godly must suffer persecution. And there are so many Christians, so many preachers that don't like suffering persecution. They want that easy route. You have preachers that died in the faith. They were stressed out. And if you look at a lot of the characters in the Bible that he said that wasn't real and how they died. And just recently I spoke on John the Baptist being beheaded because of a female. Some were boiled in oil. They died horrible death for the gospel's sake. And then you had people like Kevin Wesley come along and now all of a sudden they did all this research. They did all this research now and they, they know for a certain that the Bible is not real. And you have scholars that have studied for years and years and years, decades, with information that you would never get your hands on. And they still hold fast, fast to the faith. But you have somebody like Kevin Wesley all of a sudden did study and research. And I've seen them. I've seen them. And again, be careful with the words that these lying preachers will say to you. Oh, I've seen it. What exactly did you see? And what, did, what were you told and who told you this? Was it a tour guide that had a script that they had to go according to? Because I've been on those type of tours and you have like uh, the tour guides telling you, giving you the historical account about what's going on. I've been on those type of tour guides and 
you know, you see what's supposed to be history. But do you really think, honestly think the white man is going to leave books here for you? Just like the question Kevin Wesley asked about the Bible. Do you think the ones that enslaved you is going to allow you to learn about your true history and who you are? So feedback, tell me what you think. Click on my Teespring link and purchase some of the items, the t-shirts and the hoodies that I've created. As a matter of fact, I just put up a couple of new ones that you guys might want to check out that you might like. Even if you don't buy nothing, just go by and check it out. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.